The Central Processing Unit o CPU helps convert all the data info into useful information. It also known as the brain of the computer. It is located inside the system unit or system tower that holds the motherboard and other components. External parts, these are parts outside the system. Casing is the hard case that covers and protects the parts inside the system unit. Power switch is used to turn on the computer. Reset switch is used to restart your computer without turning it off. Usually used when the computer hangs. Universal serial bus or USB port is the slot where the USB devices such as flash drive are inserted. CD DVD ROM drive is where the CD or DVD is inserted. Headset or speaker port is where the socket of the headset or speaker is inserted. Ports are the holes at the back of the system unit. By using cables, the ports help connect the other parts such as the monitor, mouse, printer, joystick, and more. LED or light emitting diode is the blinking light around the power switch that lets you know if the computer is turned on. Internal parts are located inside the system unit. Power supply supplies electrical power that enables all internal parts to work as well as the system unit. Motherboard is where the cards, processor, and memory chips are placed. Fan keeps the parts inside the system unit cool. While processing data, the computer displays the information using output devices. These are used to display the result of what you are doing in a computer. The monitor, printer, and speakers are examples of output devices. Monitor is like a television set that shows information through a copy screen. The output shown on the screen is called a soft copy. Speaker produce sound from the computer. Display screen is where you see the things you are doing on the computer. Monitor stand serves as the knee or leg because it holds and support the monitor. Monitor base serves as the toe or foot because it supports the weight of the entire monitor. LED The system unit monitor has a light emitting diode or LED which serves as a signal if the monitor is on or off. Power switch lets you turn on and off your monitor. Adjustment buttons. You can use these buttons to adjust the color and brightness of the screen. Casing protects the inside parts of the monitor. Printer will allow you to print data on paper. The printed output is called a hard copy. That matrix printer produces a loud sound and dotted patterns when printing. It prints slowly and uses a ribbon that produces only black color. Inkjet printer. This type of printer uses air that sprays ink through the needle going to the paper. It prints faster and more quietly than the dot matrix. It can produce a colorful output using different ink colors. Laser printer is one of the most expensive type of printers. It uses a laser and powdered ink to produce a high quality output. Most of the laser printers nowadays have a built-in scanner. Aside from the monitor and printer, here are the other output devices that you can use in everyday activities. Projector is typically used for seminars and even in classroom discussions so that everyone can see the output through the wall or a projection screen. Speakers are also considered as an output device because they produce sound from the computer. Headphone and headset. You can use them if you want to hear sound on your own. Platters, they look like a giant printers. They print pictures and text as posters and tarpaulins that can be posted on billboards. They are more expensive than the average printers. Braille translator. 
this device is usually used by the visually impaired. They can read text through the braille. Any word processed by the computer can be turned into a braille at the touch of a button. All of these devices are useful and can help you deal with things that you do in your everyday life to make you do things faster and easier. After having an output of all the data you entered into your computer, it is always good to have a copy of those data by means of saving them in the computer memory or in a storage device. A computer's memory is one of the most important parts of the computer. A computer has two types of memory. These are the main memory and the secondary memory. Main memory. This kind of memory can be seen inside the system unit. These are RAM and ROM. RAM or Random Access Memory Chips is also known as a temporary memory because RAM can remember a lot of things and can also change or process information. But once the computer is turned off, the data stored in it will be erased. Room or read-only memory chips. It is also known as a permanent memory because the room is a good at remembering and all the information saved in it cannot be changed or erased. Secondary memory is also called a backup device because it supports the main memory. You can save data and information in it for future use. Hard disk is a storage device that can be found inside the system unit. Every time you save a file in your computer, it goes straight to the hard disk. It has a bigger capacity so you can store a lot of information in it. Compact disk is a portable disk that you can carry anywhere. There are different types of compact disk. CDR or compact disk recordable. This type of CD will allow you to store files only once. CDRW or compact disk rewritable. This type of CD will allow you to store files many times. CD-ROM or compact disk read-only memory. This type of CD can only read information or data stored in it, but you will not be able to add new information in it. DVD or digital versatile disk. This is a new generation of optical disk. It is much bigger than a CD. You can also save audio, photos, and other computer data. USB or Universal Serial Bus Flash Drive This is a memory stick that is much bigger in capacity than a compact disk, smaller in size, and can perform better. SD card and micro SD memory cards These are usually used for cellular phones, tablets, cameras, and other gadgets for saving files much smaller than the USB flash drive and CDs. Secondary memory or storage devices are used for storing data for future use. So if your computer is accidentally broken and you need your files, you still have a copy of that. Saving a file is just like saving your exist money or your daily allowance. If you save a lot in times of need, you will have enough money and you will not have to ask your parents for it. It will show that you are responsible and independent.